Ahsoka Finale, Episode 8, the one where the show's creators appear in the episode themselves. <laughs> yes, your average Hollywood writer there, mindless, barely able to speak, with a body that looks like skeletal remains. Now, I have heard some people say they're undead zombies, but this is California, that happens to all vegans. And while yes, Hera should be in prison, it does turn out if he removed her from the entire series, NOTHING WOULD HAVE CHANGED! So much of this episode makes you look at a character and think, okay, so why did you ever exist? What has been the point of you? The Ahsoka audience trying to work out what was the point of Balin. In fact, if you removed Ahsoka from Ahsoka, all of these same events would have happened. This is like the most pointless series in existence. But we're back with the ship that needs to get impregnated before it can go back and repopulate the next galaxy. Grand Admiral, the cargo transfer is complete. Great, leave. Now. If Thrawn utters those three words, everything is fine, safe, they go back to the galaxy and everyone else is stranded here. But he won't do that because he's an idiot. Very good indeed. Yeah, those were his words. Shall we fly off? Ah, uh, let's just sit here for a bit, shall we? You know, let them get into the base and possibly onto our ship itself. Bring the Eye of Cyan out of high orbit so that we may begin the interlocking procedure. Why don't you fly up into space and engage the interlocking procedure? Up there! <laughs> I don't even know why you designed the Eye of Sauron to be able to go through an atmosphere in the first place. But the point is, both of these are spaceships. Do it in space! They have a fix on the Jedi Shuttle's location. Great! They're down here. We can do it up there in perfect safety. Dispatch two TIE fighters. Yeah, only two. It's only a few Jedi that could destroy our entire plan. Should we go to orbit, Captain, and annihilate them? Nah, I don't think we will. I think we'll just sit here for a bit. Our ship's getting rogered by the Earth. Wouldn't want to let it down. Wait for it to finish. There is little the Jedi can do to stop us now. There'll be even less they can do if you send every single fighter you have to blast them from the sky. I've watched many an Imperial officer the same assumptions about the Rebellion. You mean like only sending two fighters to handle three Jedi. Yeah, that'd be a mistake, would it, to underestimate them? Even I fell victim to the heroics of a single Jedi. You still are! Thrawn is one of the thickest people I've ever met. How on earth is he a general? Master strategist. I'd be surprised if he could defeat a yellow duck in his bath. Oh no! It just keeps bobbing back to the surface every time I defeat it. This is impossible! Send two fighters after it! Great mothers. Calm down, Mr. T. Mother. I always love her, my mother. Our alliance has proven to be quite beneficial. You, what you mean, except for the fact that they're the ones doing all the work. They built the Eye of Sauron, they came to your galaxy, they created all of his troops, they located every person he could ever need. He's providing them a ship that goes in the middle of the Eye of S They could just go on the Eye of Sauron, load your stuff onto the Eye of Sauron, leave job done. He's about as useful to you as the Smurfs. But then they're like, Morgan, you haven't done anything this entire series. I need to reward you. But mothers, I can barely walk the four steps into the middle of the room without stumbling. You shall be rewarded. I mean, that's what they say. I'm not sure reality agrees with them. The gift of shadows. Yeah, as in we make you look like one. Are you prepared? Because when we're through with you, even GB news presenters will be allowed to say they won't shag you. Yes, great mother. When I was born. Now she's talking like Mr. T as well. Next thing, she'll have to drink a glass of milk before she goes on the Eye of Sauron. Do you pledge yourself? To the sisterhood. Because after this, we're gonna have a pillow fight and talk about boys. <laughs> Sorry, no, you can't do that, can you? You wouldn't pass the Bechdel test. Do you wanna have a pillow fight and talk about action man and cars? To the old ways. There's one thing we can agree on. You're all very familiar in the old ways. You look like you've still got an original copy of Beethoven's Fifth. I do. Well, you're in for it now, love. Do you abandon your old life? Your loyalty? Your life? All right, love, this is the kind of thing I can imagine you signing up to at a Hollywood after-dinner party. You're gonna have Sam Smith come out in a minute and just start wobbling around. <laughs> Woohoo! Look at that! Lover fly! Nurse, cancel my one o'clock. Sorry, I don't know how that got in there. But we find out what the witches offer her. It turns out it's a makeover. Yes, maybe we're just gonna talk about boys after that pillow fight after all. She decides you've got a massive forehead, we're gonna have to do something to make that look smaller. And by the way, have you ever considered some permanent eyeshadow? Sabine has hers coming out of subdued Dermal implants, I think it'd work a treat on you, love. So she starts to burn the makeup into her face. We cut to Elon and he's like, Four, if you were blue, I'd show you my strategic.
strategic advantage. I mean, at this point, he's so incompetent, I can only assume he rose up the ranks through, uh, other means. He's like the Ezra Miller of the Empire. <laughs> so why are you here? Nobody knows, but everyone suspects. Can I also point out how stupid it is to get a makeover from somebody who looks like that? It'd be like me giving you a haircut. At that point, you'd deserve it. So she starts to burn. Oh, this makeup's amazing. I've not felt this good since I had three Bacardi breezes. Can you imagine the interviews? What made you choose your original look? Well, I decided to make her look like she was married to Amber Heard. Speaking of Amber Heard. <laughs> and then they decide to summon green fire out of nowhere. We can create a brand new magical item out of thin air. Shouldn't you be doing this all the pissing time? It's a sword. I mean, if you can create a magic sword out of thin air, then maybe you can do the impossible and create a Disney Star Wars show that doesn't suck. The Blade of Talson. And I'm not saying I don't believe you, love, but you did just magic it out of thin air. How has it already got a name? Or is it just, I name all my swords, the next one I'm calling Dave. Everyone's always look forward to the sword of Dave. Alright, love, calm down. I've seen some insulting gifts before, but that's not the worst. What I really wanted was some face wipes to wipe this crap off. And they're like, take it. So like, oh, okay, if I have to. I mean, I don't know how to use a sword. I've never fought before. All I've done in the rest of the series is just stand around. But now I'm magically an incredible fighter. You know, a fighter that would have come in really useful in some of the previous episodes. For instance, defending your golden balls. Oh my god, good. Balls. When you almost didn't make it to this galaxy. Thank you, madame, for making me look like trash and then giving me a random piece of metal. Ahsoka, the show where if Ahsoka didn't exist, everything would still happen the same way. When that's the title, I know you think you're being clever. Piss off. Everyone keeps saying Star Wars references Star Wars. Well, how are we going to solve that then? Let's reference something else instead. <laughs> Should we make intelligent, complex, masculine content? You know, to actually attract an audience for once. Let's just reference stuff. It's easier. So along come the turtles and Ahsoka flying right above them. Don't know why. Let's just skim it above their heads, make them feel afraid like they deserve. Then we've got Ezra Miller making his own lightsaber because Sabine nicked his. Sorry, no, she offered it to him and he just turned it down going, I don't need one. Next episode. I really need to make one of those because I need it. The Force was my ally. Then I decided to pick up a blaster and now I realise, actually, weapons are quite useful in a fight, aren't they? So the robot starts handing him parts. No, no, that's not going to work. Yeah, piss off, you toaster. Last time I asked what I should put on it, you said Marmite instead of beans, you disgusting peasant. So they start arguing over a blade emitter. You should make it this way. No, you should make it this way. We get one of those farcical conversations to ever have existed and it's basically intelligent people versus Zoomers. Been teaching younglings how to construct lightsabers longer than you've been alive. It is a good point. And he's a droid, so he remembers all of it. <laughs> that won't work. Look, I've been doing this for 50 years. I've built that exact lightsaber a million times before. You only discovered what a soup spoon was last week. But I don't have time for lessons right now. If you're building a lightsaber and your lightsaber won't work, you have time for the lesson. Otherwise, you've got a broken lightsaber. He's actually more annoying than Ezra Miller. AKA the Bengal ghouls. I'll give him that. So he starts looking around. The other guy's like, can you stop messing up everything? Is that this is chaos. I have a system. So do I. It's not your ship. When we're in your house, maybe we'll use your system. You well, for the moment, maybe it's better to consult the droid where he's put his own stuff. Why did we travel to another galaxy for this guy? Even if we named the galaxy after him, it'd just be called Twa- Waffle. So they start talking about his master at this point. The only surprising thing about his master is he never killed him. Can you imagine being around an airlock with this guy on your ship? The self-restraint that guy must have is legendary. He was my master. Tell me everything I know. That wasn't to take him long. What did you do? Pop out for a quick visit to Pret? Pop down Costa for an espresso while he taught you the finer points of being an insufferable Pratt? The blade emitter is too narrow. I know more than the guy who's taught a thousand generations of Jedi. I've only been taught how to do this thing one way. You want me to do it a different way? That won't work. Two plus two equals four, not one plus three. This is just the personification of a Disney employee. But those were troubling times. How old are you? This guy has not even been part of basic civilization, the uncouth lout. For my next trick, I'm going to ask Sabine her body count. <laughs> What has happened to your eyes? Have you been dating Amber Heard as well? But he gives him a piece of metal. That's it. That's the piece I needed. I've only ever been taught how to build one lightsaber. If I didn't have this exact piece, it wouldn't work. I had two of those. The only way he can build a lightsaber is if he has a piece where two exist in the entire universe. All I'm saying is maybe his master didn't do a very good job of teaching him how to build a lightsaber. He only taught him how to build his 
lightsaber. Kanan took the one, the other I held onto in case he ever needed it. It's a good job he meant the only person in two galaxies that could possibly have allowed him to complete his own lightsaber. Also, it's just a machined bit of metal. It doesn't even look very complicated. <laughs> there he is, he's built his lightsaber, and don't worry, it's not merch. It can't be merch. There's only two of those pieces in the entire universe. Then he does a really stupid thing. He points it at the wall of the spaceship. <laughs> Okay, you've just caused a hole into space, mate. We're all dead. There's also something else suspicious about this scene. I'm not saying this guy is childish, but... Look how he's holding the lightsaber. Hey, Sabine, what do you think of this, love? <laughs> Puts a little bit of a different spin on it, doesn't it? Sabine, you ever seen a lightsaber this size? You did fly to a different galaxy for me, after all. Looks like you were a good student. Yeah, so Sabine gets jealous that a droid is complimenting him on the quality of his lightsaber. So she leaves. Hey Sabine, Soka ever teach you how to- Cut paper with a pair of scissors. What happened between those two? What did I miss? I thought you would have realized via the snail trail to the front door. And the droid's just like, well, Ahsoka worried that Sabine was evil. I mean, she obviously is. I just thought that was as given. Ahsoka keeps saying, I'm not good or evil. So it only makes sense that she'd be fine with Sabine being evil. He says Mandalore got completely destroyed. And so Ahsoka worried that Sabine was training for the wrong reasons. Maybe she wanted revenge. Ahsoka felt that if Sabine unlocked her potential, she would become dangerous. And not merely insufferable. I don't even know what Sabine would do if she turned evil. Just go around the universe making sure everyone's got eyeshadow on. Forces Hu Yang to put on an Instagram filter, give him a proper jawline. Cut to Sabine, the true evil of the series. That's right, we've all decided to just sit on a ship that's flying. What's this, the next evolution of economy planes? Well, Ahsoka's like, shall we talk about the weather? No, let's just dive into the controversy, shall we? You gamble, Peter, so you know. You know I've destroyed our home galaxy. You know that I was really scared of Thrawn, and then I just thought, let him wipe out trillions of people, everyone I've ever known. It's time to bring back the Empire, because I don't give a crap about any of you. Yeah, you know about that, do you? I do. Okay, so why haven't you just cut her head off? The the only just treatment for what she's done. I can't believe you're on my back over something as small as betraying an entire galaxy. Don't you understand I've got fallopian tubes? I can't be held accountable for my actions. Never thought I'd see him again. Sorry. I don't want you to be sorry. I want you to be punished. You betrayed an entire galaxy. You committed treason. I know. Who cares? Look, she's got purple hair, she knows the language, don't be sorry, be better. No, I'm just gonna commit treason on a galactic scale and then go, but I'm sorry for it, folks. You can't do anything to me. I've played my purple hair Uno reverse card. You're not mad? Mad? You should be cut in half, love. Years I've made my share of difficult choices. Betraying an entire galaxy shouldn't be a difficult choice. You know, in my lifetime, I too have made decisions that wiped out trillions of people. I too decided to just side with the most evil person I could find. I do question why in Ahsoka, we're following the villains. Often no one understood my reasons. I understood her reasons. I was willing to kill an entire galaxy just so I could get my end away. Someone fetch Robin Hood's jar. There's plenty more galaxies around. I think she's gonna need it. Accept my master, Anakin. Oh, great. Don't worry, I'm gonna let you go because I also did horrifically heinous acts and the only person who understood me was Anakin, Darth Vader. Now, I understand why Darth Vader might be the only person who would understand why Sabine would want to bring back the Empire to murder billions of people. Always stood by me. I mean, that was clearly a mistake because now you've grown up into somebody who will let your Padawan off committing mass murder. Even when no one else did. The moral people. I'm going to be there for you. Great, maybe we can fire you both into a volcano. That might actually bring balance to the force. After this series, the light side could do with a win. I have gained better control over my lightsaber. You mean Ezra's lightsaber. After all, it is attached to him. Sorry, it's Robin Hood's jar. I just, I can't get it out of my head. You could decimate half of Canada with that thing. Being a Jedi isn't about wielding a lightsaber. It doesn't matter what else they do. It is. Largely because if you don't wield a lightsaber, you die. You know, you get into a fight, it helps to have weapons. Some Quick, somebody tell Ezra. Train your mind, train your body, trust in the force. You don't need a lightsaber, just trust in the force and then die. If there's one thing we learned throughout the rest of this episode, you need a pissing lightsaber. But at that moment, thankfully, along come the two TIE fighters that the guy could be bothered to send out. And this time, they've upgraded their weaponry so it actually does something. 
Yeah, the sparks are actually flying over the ship when they hit it this time. Maybe it's because they couldn't have these shields up as idiots were standing on top of it. And so the plane starts going down after it just got hit like twice. Like, oh, quick, we've got to use the force to hold it up. We've lost the stabilizer. I'm not surprised you've lost your stabilizers. Did you see what Sabine did to him? You're supposed to be a Jedi, can't even get into your seat without crashing into your co-pilot. He's there, desperately trying to level out the ship, and she's like, Oh, I just smashed it into the ground, thanks to you! Warning coloration, bright colours, signal toxicity. That's got nothing to do with the show, I don't know why that was in there. So then Ahsoka decides to just embarrass Ezra Miller. Keep it up! There's no need to humiliate him like that in front of all of his turtle friends. And then the turtle does this. Keep it up! Mate, you've got a shell on your back. Go into shell form. It'll protect you a lot more than your little piddly arms. Of course, that animation is a lot cuter if it's merch, but don't worry, this isn't merch. They wouldn't do that. So then we get Ahsoka doing calisthenics. They're like, pretend you're lifting something heavy. Well, I don't know what that looks like. I've never done it before. <laughs> Don't worry, Ezra's not any better. Instead, it just looks like he's singing YMCA or crapping himself during a routine traffic stop. But the TIE Fighters return. <laughs> Don't worry, for the second run, they turned off the weapon's ability to do anything. He's like, I'm gonna fiddle with this panel over here. This'll give us a short burst for the engines. So as the TIE Fighters come back for another run, <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna smash into him. Don't worry, it's not gonna do any damage to my ship. Just theirs. Because this ship was designed to smash into metal at high speed. <laughs> like, hey! Then the engines cut out and she crashes. Don't worry, that's not gonna do much damage to it either. It only crashed headfirst into the ground at speed. Give him 20 minutes, it'll be flying again. Unfortunately, Sabine did manage to walk away from the crash. Got him. Were you under the impression that nobody had noticed? This is like backflipping off a table onto your face and then going... Nailed it. Yeah, that's what I was intending to do. The question is why? Of course, Ahsoka looks really impressed and smug. She's probably just grateful that her decisions this time hasn't wiped out another galaxy. Sorry to state the obvious, but this is gonna slow us down a bit. Of course, they had to make the bloke say the most stupid line in the entire series. Even at the start of his own sentence, he went, by the way, this is gonna be really stupid. But have you considered without a plane, we won't be able to fly? Elon gets informed that the TIE fighters have lost contact. He's like, okay, just assume they're all dead. An acceptable outcome. And I did get defeated, but it's acceptable. As long as I get defeated repeatedly, it's all fine. That's what I intended to do. I like backflipping off a table onto my own face. Yes, but why? Because it all of the TIE fighters lost. Mark their captain for a citation. Why? You're the general. You're the guy who only sent two of them rather than all of them. You could have wiped these people off the face of the planet and you're like, nah, two will do. They'll probably die, but at least I'll be able to tell the dead captain that he's useless. As you wish, Grand Admiral. You have been useless at everything so far. I could understand why you'd be happy with this defeat as well. Also, what is the point of that character? He's never done anything, ever. But it's like, now their ship is down, we need to prepare for a ground assault. Great, because ground assaults are really easy to repel when you've got a spaceship that can leave the ground. Do you remember this from the start of the episode? The cargo transfer is complete. So why are you still here? But then we've got the dogs and we're riding along. Obviously Ahsoka, she's got her own because she's more important. And Ezra is right at the back behind Sabine, where he belongs. Belongs. If he'd been a man, maybe it'd be different. No, Sabine definitely dominates that relationship. I mean, at this point, I can only imagine that as he's riding along, she's basically getting poked in the back. Hey, Ezra, is that your lightsaber? Uh, yes. Oh, I never realized you started dual wielding. May the force be with you. Because you're gonna need it. Now, at this point, even if you want the Eye of Sauron to come down within the atmosphere, that ship could still take off. Just do it in the air. Go up a hundred meters, the Jedi still couldn't get to you. The blessing of the great mothers shall protect you in battle. It'll protect you, right? You know what else would protect them? Flying in the air. I also love how she's holding the sword as if it's attached to her belt. They didn't design her costume to have a sword on it. So she's just holding it there. Thrawn's like, all of them volunteered. They all knew what they were getting in for, right? All were honored to make the sacrifice for you. Why? I mean, signing up to Thrawn's army, you know you're gonna be involved in so some kind of incompetent plan that'll fail, considering that's all he ever does. But to volunteer for one is the height of stupidity. Unless it's just like, Sabine's coming, I will die to make sure nobody else has to suffer her company. In which case, I'd be completely on their side. That's true sacrifice. We must prevent Ahsoka and Sabine returning to that galaxy. At least if we keep them trapped in this galaxy, we can stop the degeneracy from spreading. <laughs> so then we get the Eye of Sauron coming into land. I don't know why. The Eye of Sauron's come all the way down 
phone and is trying to mate with it as it is already getting rogered from the ground. At this point, I'm like, are you sure this is meant to be on Disney Plus? But as they arrive, I'm sure they've got incredibly intelligent observations to make. Looks like we're just in time. Nailed it. You want to know when you wouldn't have been in time? You'd just taken off a bit and done it in the sky. He's taking the Star Destroyer with him. Yeah, that's because he wants to conquer the next galaxy. And one single Star Destroyer will make all the difference in regards to that. So Sabine's like, hey, Mr. Robot and all those turtle people, can you fly the ship yet? I'm doing the best I can. We get to see the best you can do. Do not wait for me. That is the look of a broken man. I can't believe I've gone from Doctor Who into this trash. I used to rule time. And now I've got to stand by as merch electrocutes itself. Notice he didn't do anything to save this guy from the lethal amount of electricity that will run through a starship. It's just like you get what you deserve. <laughs> so we're so grass Ezra. All right, mate, you've been on this planet for years. Do you have any intelligence about this ship? No. The last time Ezra had any intelligence, it's when he went on the red carpet and didn't say anything. <laughs> It wasn't safe to come here alone. Don't worry, now you've got the girls with you. <laughs> I do think everyone should remember that sentence though. It wasn't safe to come here alone. Yeah, and he was too intelligent to have done something so stupid on his own. So the only reason he's doing it now is because they say they'll back him up. Well, you're not alone anymore. No, but you are a completely evil bint who has let her own Padawan off for committing treason on an entire galaxy. So I have a feeling you're not going to be too loyal to him. Even Sabine's like, oh, did you have to say it? Look, I know he's behind me, but maybe I'll just be short term. Don't tell him I'm going to be making commitments. I've got a whole jar back in the ship and this is an entirely new galaxy. So many species, so little time. Let's try the front door. You're just full of smart ideas, aren't you? So how do you think we should assault this fortress? I know. Let's go in the front. <laughs> yeah. Yes, where all the defenses are focused. Awesome idea. I don't know why you're putting your helmet on, love. That's not going to save you. Your arms are uncovered. You get hit by anything. You're dead anyway. So Elon's there just watching them walk up to his fortress. He does have two spaceships and loads of TIE fighters that he could use in this very moment. It's incoming from the north. Good. Are you going to do anything about it? You're supposed to be a master strategist. Why is it taking you so long to say anything? In hellfire upon them. So all your TIE fighters are going to go out. There'll be no negotiating with the apprentice of Anakin Skywalker. Why would you negotiate anyway? You've got overwhelming firepower. Shoot some of it. And so you see the targeting of the ships shooting at point blank range directly in their path. These ships are designed to fight in space. I have a feeling they could hit something 50 meters beneath them. And so Ahsoka and Sabina doing what any smart military person would do when they're under fire. They're running in a straight line. If only Dave Filoni wasn't engaging in his hobbies of flower arranging, then maybe he would have maybe played a video game or something and learned the word serpentine. Look how close they are to a ship. The blasters at that range must be incredibly powerful. Meant to take out capital ships. Look, look how many lasers are being fired at them. I mean, you're just taking the piss. Look how far away that explosion was from her. What was this one doing? Look how far away it is from her. Look at the distance. It's not even close. What was this one doing? Who fired that one? Every time someone misses from that distance, you should just drop them on top of them. Hey, you fight then. You can't fire a laser. Go down and hit them with a sword. So we get a lot more explosions. Obviously, nothing is even remotely near them. There is this one, which you would assume would be close enough to Ahsoka to do some damage, judging by the fact that it's right next to her. Look, it's only a capital laser. It doesn't have a large air of effect. It's not that powerful. Basically, if it doesn't hit you directly, it does nothing. But then we hit peak farce. Ezra, the gate. He's like, yeah, Ezra, open the gate. And so he's there. Ah, don't worry, love. I've got my hand up. This will open anything. <laughs> All of those security procedures that everyone has, it's just like, nah, we could just open it with the force. Yes, before we did have to open locked doors with lightsabers to cut a big hole in because we couldn't just force the lock open with the force. But now lightsabers don't do any damage, so that couldn't cut through a door, remember? So now we're gonna say the force did it. Sabine, help out! What is Sabine gonna do? She doesn't have access to the force. He's like, don't worry, I got you, love. I'll pretend I'm doing something. <laughs> so they're all there, just holding their hands up. Yes, together we can magically open a locked door. Quite frankly, if I was you, I'd be trying to use the force to force the guns off Axis so they weren't blowing us away. But as you're not concerned that they're going to hit you, just focus on the door in it. Then we get Ezra just accepting that his entire army is completely useless and crap. <laughs> 
he's just sighing. Oh my god, these these guys. These guys can't even hit a dog which is running in a straight line. Just say over the radio that anyone who misses by more than five meters will get defenestrated. I mean, come on. So they somehow open the doors, force it open wide enough for a soaker to ride through with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Of course, Sabine almost gets crushed because the moment Ahsoka's through, she's like, can't be bothered to use the force anymore, you're on your own. And so she almost dies. Elon is incredibly annoyed because he's failed once again. I mean, you'd think he'd be used to it by this point. He still doesn't just say, okay, just take off. I mean, they're in the base now. Just take off so they can't get in the ship. They're on the back of dogs. They can't fly. We'll be perfectly safe. Never crosses his mind. My calculations seem to be wrong, Mr. Bond. Dispatch the night troopers. Just dispatch everything. Maybe if you throw enough people at them, one of them might do something. I shall inform the great mothers. Wait a minute. Don't bring anyone mother into this. So then finally, Elon sends a decent number of people against the Jedi. And this time, they're actually shooting at them, which is unusual. <laughs> So they're all deflecting blaster bolts, and at this point I'm like, how does she know how to do it? Those two could deflect the blaster bolts because they could essentially sense them in the force and knew where they were coming before they hit them. Somehow Sabine can do it through reaction speed alone. If she's that fast, you'd expect her to actually be good at something. Don't worry though, Ahsoka in absolutely no rush. Yeah, I'm just gonna, oh, 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 I'm gonna spin this one. I'm gonna spin this one and spin this one again. You shoot more than one blaster bolt at Ahsoka a second, she is in trouble. Fall back. Draw them out. I really don't know why you think that's gonna be an advantage. I don't know if you realize what the stormtroopers were doing before. They were hardly taking cover, were they? It's not as if they were hanging back in the staircase using it as cover. But then Ahsoka finally has a good idea. Blasters. Yeah, you trash with that thing, love, because you don't have access to the force. You're supposed to be a warrior. Why do you need somebody else to constantly tell you what weapon to use? Uh, Sabine, I think your guns might be useful in this ranged situation. Finally. Pulls out a blasters, stands behind the two people that can protect her because they're deflecting blaster bolts, and we finally start to actually beat them. I mean, yes, they do have the same problem that we keep getting in this series, it being this. <laughs> Why don't you just get shot in the back, mate? You do realize running backwards isn't faster than running forwards, right? All he had to do is run at the enemy. Instead, he exposes his back to three troopers who are right next to him. Why did none of them just go, oh, thanks? But Ahsoka does the same thing on the other side. Sabine keeps blasting from the middle. And together, we take out the stormtroopers. Got Elon and his three mums. 2023, anything can happen. They start chanting. Ready, not yeah, we learned this on TikTok. But this green gas starts to pour into the soldiers. Their eyes glow. And Ahsoka's like, uh, wh what? Uh, look, I knew lightsabers didn't do any damage, but I thought they did a bit more than this. Ezra, this never happened before. I mean, if it did, I would have assumed he'd mention it to you. Oh, by the way, when we go in there, th they can summon the dead. <laughs> the soldiers like staggering around. They can use blasters, but they can't move very well. Very slow. <laughs> Except that guy who just decided that I'm gonna strut up to the other end. I'm pretty sure they even put a Wookiee noise in there somewhere. And it's really weird because they don't have any tactics or strategy. They're basically trying to just walk up to them. At least zombies are a threat because when they get to you, they try and bite your face. <laughs> I mean, with something like that, I can't help wondering if Dave Filoni has mummy issues. Alternate title would be dad issues. Daddy issues. I mean, he spent all series calling these his mother, and then they all put on horrific makeup and do that. <laughs> Would you like to tell us about your childhood? <laughs> so they're getting chased by the zombies, retreating up the stairs. The Sabine's going in front with the Jedi, protecting her from blasters. <laughs> Why did no one shoot Ahsoka when she turned her back on them? I mean, surely now is your perfect opportunity. I suppose we can write it off as they're undead, they don't know any better. The veganism just doesn't provide enough energy to power their brains. Are you sure you should be pissing off the vegans? Well, what are they gonna do? All I've gotta do is go upstairs. They won't have the energy to follow me. Now, the strange thing is we were staggering before, but now we seem to be learning how to walk. <laughs> 
I mean, that's basically just normal walking. But as we go up the stairs, somehow, don't ask me how, the zombies are actually in front of them on a different level that was above them, and they start pouring out of all the corridors. I'm like, you do realize this isn't an actual zombie invasion, right? This isn't like a zombie escaped and started biting other people around the population, and so now everywhere you go is covered in zombies. The only zombies that exist are the ones that they've killed. So there can't be any zombies above them because they haven't got there to kill them yet. Of course, that doesn't stop this from happening. Oh, I'm just gonna grab you because I'm too thick to hold a blaster. <laughs> ah, Sabine, help me. Because my testosterone levels are so low. I need someone who's actually got it in their bloodstream to come and save me. Careful! Careful! She's definitely gonna shoot you in the face. No wonder he's like, careful! I've seen you with a lightsaber, you trash. <laughs> I'm not surprised she didn't trust herself. What is that? So I'm a Mandalorian. I've been practicing with blasters my entire life. I've been practicing with a lightsaber for about a week. Better pull out the weapon I'm far less proficient with. The only reason he didn't die is because he rolled out the way. He's like, oh no, I'm in trouble now. I better escape myself. He basically frees himself. There's no way I can get away from this. Sabine, help me. Crap, she's pulled out a lightsaber. <laughs> Escape or death, those were his decisions there, and he it managed to inspire him into escaping. They discover a rather major security flaw within the base. Seal the door! Yeah, love, how are you gonna seal the door? <laughs> oh, right, you just hit the door open button, and uh, this happens. That seems like a bit of a problem. Imagine every time your doorbell broke, your front door wouldn't open anymore. Sorry, mate, we can't open it now. You're just gonna have to buy a new house. Well, then Sabine just decides to do that on every door. And this raises even more questions. If there are these bulkheads on the stairs to stop people going upstairs, why did Thrawn not use them to stop the pissing Jedi going up? Thrawn, you are the worst strategist I have ever seen. Shall we use the bases to fend? No, let's let her use them against herself. Nice moves. Do you mean nice moves? You had to roll out the way, otherwise she was going to murder you. Just like she wiped out your entire home galaxy. She's been training. Yeah, she's more evil than ever before. What's your excuse? He's not been around Ahsoka, so he might still have some morals. I missed you. Yeah, she wasn't gonna miss you though, that's why you had to roll out the way. So they decide to go up the stairs, dropping the bulkheads behind them, because Thrawn couldn't be bothered to use it against them. We get the clamps coming out from the Eye of Sauron. This could have just been done up in the air. And along comes Johnny Depp. We are ready to depart, Grand Admiral. You could have just departed at the start of this episode. It saved us all a lot of time. The Jedi are advancing swiftly. It's almost like you should have taken off about half an hour ago. It's great they make it on board the ship. I can't believe you are so awful at what you've done. It's like you planned to fail. That's how good your strategies are. Which would be problematic. Almost like a man being in charge and not being awful. <laughs> so we need more time and that means I need you to uh, sacrifice for the Empire. I understand. I spend all day at a computer and my posture isn't that bad. So the mothers walk by like, ha ha, we screwed you over once again. Just like we do to all of the sisterhood. Yes, everyone wants to be in here. It's just full of betrayal and backstabbing like any sisterhood. <laughs> but don't worry, she's holding her sword next to herself to pretend she's got a scabbard. Daphne. Why would you do it for Dathomir? This is your home planet. <laughs> Why do the witches want to leave their home planet to go to Dathomir, which isn't? What's wrong with this one? It's only got a few turtles on it. So she storms off, desperately pretending she's got a scabbard on her hip. <laughs> we run upstairs. And then the zombies decide to blow up one of the doors behind them. And they've all, like, somehow learned how to walk properly now? Yeah, the zombies have now learned military strategy in, like, five minutes. Which is more than Thrawn's done in his entire life. Look, we're just running up now. Is it that you bring them back from the dead and they slowly learn how to move over time, or what? Did Dave Filoni just forget his own storyline? Because he's done that repeatedly throughout the entire series. <laughs> Why didn't they do that? But then we run up against the granny and the most stupid thing happens. You know, I said in a previous episode, stop making mistakes that you already made in a previous episode. Well, don't worry, we're doing it for a third time, folks. Ahsoka and Sabine never held accountable for their own actions. And because of that, they don't learn from their mistakes. 
go on, I'll handle this. We've literally seen this multiple times before. What are you doing? We stay together, remember? Hey, Sabine learned something for once. That's a surprise. You must stop Thrawn. Do you know how you're gonna stop Thrawn? If you defeat this person as fast as possible and then go after Thrawn. You know what would defeat her incredibly quickly? Three Jedi surrounding her and just stabbing her all at the same time because she can't defend against all of you with one sword. It doesn't take the military genius of Thrawn to think of this. Now go. So they literally walk around the room, just staring at her. She's got blasters, she doesn't even bother to fire. Please tell me how a single sword could prevent two blaster bolts fired at the same time. Just shoot her in the leg and the head at the same time. GG folks, we win. They go behind her. We could all just attack now and beat her immediately. Oh, I think I just want a 1v1 fight. I mean, what's this even meant to be? Ahsoka fighting old age? <laughs> It's a lightsaber fight between two body type ones. You've seen it before. We're both small, tiny, unimposing. Every time our defenses are open, no one's going to attack. I've got two lightsabers versus your one, but I'm not going to use any of the advantages of those things. I'm pulling back for an attack. I'm defending rather than attacking you when both of your lightsabers are behind you. Your sword's in the air. I've got two lightsabers. What should I do? She dodged out the way. What am I going to do now? Oh, look, I'm going to spin. Petition to stop Ahsoka spinning whenever she fights. This goes on seemingly forever. Sabine and Ezra go up to the top. They're like, I think we can make it. Uh oh, no, we've got two troopers, undead troopers. And their armor seems to be immune to everything. <laughs> yeah, your pea shooter ain't gonna be much use here, love. Then Ezra gives it a go. <laughs> Sticks his lightsaber into his chest. <laughs> that was about as useful as it was on Sabine. <laughs> Wish that had happened to Sabine. Yeah, hey, you know, I've already shot him with a blaster once and found out he's immune to it. Better shoot him twice more just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Wait, why did that guy drop his gun? <laughs> what? Ah, she shot me with a blaster. Better just drop mine. It's not like it knocked it out of his hand. He just dropped it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to fight you hand to hand rather than just shooting you with a blaster. <laughs> If he had a blaster now, he could just shoot her in the crotch. She doesn't have any armor there. Although this is a Dave Filoni production, it's probably immune to all damage. It'd just get deflected off and hit Ezra in the face or something. But we're back on the Eye of Sauron. Take us out. Why did you do this half an hour ago? Save us all a lot of time. So they hear the ship go off and both get distracted. Just shows how awful both of them are at fighting. A decent Mario would have taken advantage of the situation. Instead, the witch does this. She somehow throws her lightsabers in the air. I'm, s I'm still not sure how that works. But she's got her sword. It's ready. Her entire side is open. We're just going to swing it through her and cut her in half. Right? Right? Ahsoka gets what she deserves. <laughs> uh oh, apparently we're just going to elbow her in the side, despite the fact that she's defenseless and I've got a sword. <laughs> Oh yeah, now you swing the sword. Now you know that she's got weapons up to deflect it. Why are you kicking her? You've got a sword. Oh, you fake kicked into a spin for some reason. You were open for about three seconds there if she just attacked you. So he grabs her hand. Hopefully you're like, oh, at least you're gonna snap her wrist, right? Except because this guy is a complete moron, he decides to grab her gun and point it at his own face. Hold it over there or something? Wrestler for it? Instead, what we do get is um the exposed skeletal structure of his face. This is an undead trooper, just like the rest of them. Look, the WGA strike went on a long time. They had to cut back on their food budgets. Avocado toast is expensive. So he grabs her helmet and just yanks it off. I probably would have just grabbed it and twisted myself, but you know, each to their own. She drops her lightsaber because, you know, weren't using it, not a big loss. But, but then he picks up the four foot two warrior and holds her against a wall. During all this, Ezra, not, he's not doing too great either. And you can tell that the guy fighting him, he knows how to, he knows how to fight. Yeah, he picks him up. And just throws him into open space. Got you, I could do anything to you. I don't want you anymore, just go over there for a bit, will you? Why don't you take advantage of the fact that you were grabbing him and could do anything to him and there's nothing he could do to defend himself? At least throw him into a wall. Instead, he grabs his arm, punches him. We cut back to Sabine getting choked. I mean, that's not happened since you met Ahsoka. <laughs> I think I'm a Jedi now. I mean, I've not had any powers before. And in fact, Hu Yang, you know, the guy who's only trained a thousand generations of Jedi, has told me that I don't have any force powers. You think he'd know? Maybe if I squeeze up my face a bit, I'll be able to do magic. And he begins to move. And then flies into her hand. And you know what that means? They were right when they said every single person can use the force. Every single character in Star Wars has telekinetic powers, has the ability to predict the future, can fight with lightsabers, and live forever 
in the force. I just can't be bothered to do it though, because they're all morons and too lazy. You've managed to now insult every single person in your universe. Well done, well done. It's not as if the Sith would take advantage of this and raise armies or something. So she just turns on the lightsaber and blasts it through his face, but then she manages to save Ezra. His testosterone levels are too low, so he can't save himself. <laughs> Sabine, though, coming in like the man of the house. Don't worry, damsel in distress, I've got you. That allows him to grab his own lightsaber, something which he'd never even tried to do before. Why did you get up like that? Look at the position we're in. Look where he is. All you've got to do is stand up towards him and swing at the same time. You'd cut him in half. Why did you decide that your best bet was to turn your back on the enemy? Can we stop exposing the most vulnerable part of a human being to the enemy who has a weapon and can kill us? Can you get some writers who've been in a fight? Like, employ somebody who's been in a fight. Like, anyone. If they don't have cauliflower ears, don't employ them. At this point, just make a show written by football hooligans from the 90s. Now they would be able to choreograph a great fight. Those guys knew their stuff. And he manages to decapitate him. Despite the fact that his lightsaber didn't actually, it didn't reach. <laughs> oh, by the way, we had to do it behind this pillar. Cuts down on the CGI bills and saves the Disney sensibilities. If it's not destructive to all of society, then Disney don't want to show it on camera. <laughs> but the soldiers who have, they all run perfectly fine now, just, I mean. You'd never know they were undead, would you? But the ship is taking off. You can see. That's where they've got to reach, right? And that is where they're jumping from. I'm just saying I don't think Sabine, the little short horse, is going to make it. Too late. Yes. Yes, you are. Far too late. Back to the fight, which, I mean, I think this is meant to be the big thing in the series. Should have been Balin. Thrawn. Fighting your own gran and just, it's, it's not impressive. I mean, if you can knock her down just by hitting her lightsabers, I don't know why we didn't do this before. She's in trouble. The stormtroopers have arrived. She can't beat them all. I don't know what that face is for. So she just starts deflecting the blasters that the stormtroopers are firing at her. Meanwhile, the granny's just doing nothing. She's just standing there. What's wrong, love? Did you run out of Werther's Originals or something? Do something. Retreats up the stairs. The stormtroopers start staring at, at just fire, mate. I, like, I know you can't aim. At least have a go. Nah, why would we bother shooting our enemies? You can't make that jump. True. It'd be really stupid to try. No, I push you first and you pull me across. That's not how this is gonna work, love. You can't use the force. I know you just did it in the last room, but that was a fluke. You have no idea how you did it. You even had to scrunch up your face like a chipmunk to get it done. I'm not trusting you. Did you notice, by the way? But yeah, you go first, mate. No, Sabine. How about you go first? Because at least then, when you inevitably let me down, at least I will have been able to have got you across. Do this. No, you can't, and it's stupid to try. But he's like, oh, okay, I'll let you do it. Person who's used the force for the first time 20 seconds ago. Ezra, the longer you hesitate, the harder this gets. Come on. How can it get any harder? You can't screw your face up anymore. You're gonna have to dye your hair a different colored purple or blue and go Super Saiyan for this. So he's like, yeah, let me get a running jump first. So he jumps. Are you like, well, you're not gonna make that, mate? I mean, I am no expert, but that arc is not gonna make it. So she waits until he starts to fall. He's underneath the ship at this point, right? The ship's here, he's now falling, and she's here. If she pushes him, she's gonna push him into the underbelly of the ship. So she pushes him. Can you just play snooker? Dave Filoni, stop writing, go and play snooker, understand how angles work. I don't believe you could use the force, love. How did you go from I can move a lightsaber to I can shift Ezra across the universe? We don't need space whales to go home. We're just gonna use her own ego to power the ship. <laughs> Luckily, he died. I'm not that lucky though, am I? How on earth did you hit that shot? I've seen you miss things from two feet away. Come on, your turn! Yeah, come on, your turn, Sabine. Join me on the ship with Thrawn, all of the sisters, and legions of stormtroopers. Because remember what you said before. It wasn't safe to come here alone. Ezra, engaging brain, I wouldn't be stupid enough to go up there on my own, I'd die. Well, you're not alone anymore. And then you find out why Ahsoka would forgive Sabine committing treason on her entire galaxy. I'll tell you that I'm loyal. Hey. Your turn. Yeah, it's your turn, Sabine. Be loyal and come and help me because otherwise I'm going to die. Yeah, come on, I'll join you. Oh no, there's Ahsoka. Sabine, there's no time. Come on. 
Yes, there's no time, Sabine. Ahsoka's only fighting like 15 men and one swordsman. I've got an entire capital ship after me. <laughs> also, she seems to be able to handle herself, quite frankly. Sabine's like, okay, yeah, the far better fighter out of the three of us should probably be left alone against the smaller number of fighters. I'm gonna go and jump after him. So then Ahsoka comes out and she's fighting all these people, basically focusing on defense at this point. Very clever. Finally, Granny decides I should probably do something. Don't worry, I've eaten a lettuce leaf. I've got some more energy now. <laughs> I don't know why you just didn't do that the first time. If it's that easy to destroy a lightsabers and you're that much more skilled than her, let's do that before. I don't really know why we did that. Let's just grab her wrist and make her jump over herself. Why did we do that? Why are those five stormtroopers that are all standing behind you not shooting you in the back when you're trying to murder their master? Shoot her, she's defenseless. You have a clean shot, your master is on the ground. But the fight goes on, none of them firing. I don't know, suddenly we all care about honor or something. And then we get the most stupid fight move of the entire series. And I know you're thinking, this is hyperbole. It isn't. She rolls, holds her hand out. I mean, remember, her hand isn't lightsaber proof, but it does get worse. Ah Ahsoka deflects her sword with her lightsaber. Then Granny decides to punch her. If Ahsoka hadn't spun around, her lightsaber would be there and you would have just punched her lightsaber. She starts to spin. Ahsoka is just looking at her and she tries to kick. She tries to kick Ahsoka. Look where Ahsoka's lightsaber is. You're about to kick her own lightsaber and cut your pissing leg off. Or you would have been if Ahsoka didn't decide to dodge and instead had just lifted her lightsaber up. Please don't try and kick lightsabers. It doesn't end well. But you know, this is Ahsoka. She's never one to learn from her mistakes, generally because she's never been held accountable for any of them. And so like Robin Hood, she, Granny falls to the ground and just decides to kick her rather than using her lightsaber. Gently touching somebody with your shoe is an incredibly powerful fighting move, as long as you're a body type one. That's how it manages to flip her onto her back, apparently. Despite the fact it didn't have the energy to do it. Granny has won. The ship's taken off. Sabine and Ezra are going home. As long as they can fight through an entire battalion of stormtroopers. Your friends are dead. They soon will be. And you will die here. This should have been the ending. Everybody's dead. 10 out of 10. Alone. Don't you tell me I don't have any friends. Not alone. <laughs> That's right, Sabine doesn't give a crap about Ezra at all, which means she just voluntarily decided to slaughter her entire galaxy for no reason. I tell you, you need to stop dyeing your hair, love. It's doing something to your brain. You literally had Ezra going, I'm too clever to go there on my own. It would have killed me. Don't worry, we'll stand next to you because we're loyal. It's the sisterhood. Oh, by the way, you're going to die. If I was Ezra, I would have just force pulled anyway. Drop her to the ground. Oh, do you like M consequences, love? <laughs> And so they start fighting, and now she has mastered the force and can use both weapons at the same time. She has mastered things like being able to have four stormtroopers behind her at the same time, holding blasters, and yet not getting shot in the back. Then Ahsoka gets a super-powered kick of her own and knocks Granny to the ground. Getting bored of this fight. If Balin was involved, maybe it'd matter. As it is, she cuts her in half with a lightsaber and her own sword, and yet doesn't actually cut her in half. No, you see all the wounds. She just stays together for some reason. Morgan is dead. That's a shame. I mean, you did spend so long on her makeup. He answers that guy's radio, which gives him the idea. Ah, actually, maybe this might come in useful. Drags his body off. Where's Ezra? He's going home. Yeah, in a body bag. Yeah, you know when he said it was too dangerous to go up there alone? Well, I just ditched him up there. Yeah, yeah. He thought we were really close. Turns out though, and I didn't realize at this at the time, I I'm actually more in love with you, Ahsoka. Wanna get out of here? Yeah, because the longer you two survive, screw Ezra, right? So they sprint to the edge. Have the main batteries target the fortress for bombardment. Didn't you meet the Eye of Sauron in the sky and blow it up then if you wanted? What's the point of blowing it up now when everybody's leaving? She's like, you're just an idiot. You're going to murder your own troops and they're not going to do anything. But nobody questions Elon. I mean, he's got a record of 100% failures. You don't want to give him advice to break his streak. So he starts shooting on his own base with his own men in it as they're leaving anyway, so they don't care. They just turn their backs and all the storm Stormtroopers obviously can't get hit, and they jump off. So the stormtroopers run up to the edge and look over the edge. What's down there, mate? Because if they're down there, you might want to shoot them. Oh, I can only see the Jedi when they become level with... You're looking over the edge. You can see them down there. Why didn't you go, hey, hey mate, they landed on a ship. Open fire. Why aren't you shooting them now? Look how lazy Sabine is. Oh. 
Oh no. Oh you oh you fired another Oh, this is can you see how much effort I'm putting into deflecting these blasts? It's really tense. Yeah, it's really tense. We're, we're just intimidating fighters that you really believe are actually, you know, taking on all these people. So then their base collapses. Somehow he's got it in the air, despite the fact that it crashed into the ground, and then his friend electrocuted himself. Never find out if he survived. So Thrawn just essentially kills his own men for no reason whatsoever. Another great astounding loss. I'm really glad you're a general, mate. Go back to their own galaxy and help destroy the Empire? I mean, it's all you seem to be achieving. Decide to chase after the Eye of Sauron. On. He's already in space, which he should have been at the start of the episode. They're following. Thrawn's like, I'm going to open a channel and brag because you've defeated me at every single turn. And so I'm feeling spicy. Ahsoka Tano. Congratulations on your victory, Ahsoka. Allow me to commend you on your efforts today. I can't believe he actually did congratulate them on our victory. I'm terrible at everything. I know you because I knew your master. That's not how any of this works. If you knew her as well, couldn't you just hit her with a laser, mate? I was rooting for you. I was like, maybe you'll turn evil as well, like Anakin did. I, it's too late for that, mate. She already has. So is Sabine. Where a Ronin such as you belongs. Star Wars lore there, you know? The last Ronin. Star Wars doesn't just reference Star Wars anymore. Now we reference other things as well. Today, victory is mine. Is running away from an entire galaxy with your tail between your legs a victory? I mean, she's lost as well, but you are just both losers. So he jumps to hyperspace. She gets affected by the same field that we've already seen, and they decide to live happily ever after among the crab people. Sabine, used to living with crabs, I'm sure she'll be right at home. So both of them come over the hill like two horsemen of the apocalypse. All the crabs are, oh no, the back. But they have brought their spaceship with them, so I suppose we can't tell them to piss off. Now's a great time to turn into your shell form. Hope they haven't seen you yet. Then there's like a bird. Well, that flies off. Both the Soaker and Sabine like birds. The apprentice comes along and finds like, is that is that the fake sand people's base? Oh, well, that's meant to, like, oh, I'm gonna join you. Oh, I am your master now. I've got a lightsaber. And then we've got Balin. Star Wars doesn't just reference Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars references other things as well. <laughs> what is the point of this? What was the point of Balin? I'm just gonna exist for a few episodes, say nothing, and then stand on a statue. Oh, his character was a waste of time, wasn't it? At least he did give us one of two characters that could fight. Him and Anakin. I don't know if you can tell what they've got in common. But then the Eye of Sauron arrives. Strangely, it's arrived at a, a different planet. Approaching Dathomir, Grand Admiral. I'm assuming they had to go to the whale graveyard and then jumped here separately because otherwise it means they took a different route back to this galaxy rather than the one the space whales showed them. He's like, oh, we finally repopulated this galaxy, despite the fact that I thought we were in the other one. But then we get a spaceship escorted by two tiny little fighters that definitely wouldn't be able to do any damage to it. I'd love to know what he told them, but they escort him into docking with one of the capital ships. He lands in front of the general. May just be me, but you would have thought that a general would have been told what was on the ship that was landing. Instead, no, we're all going to guard this because nobody knows what's here, despite the fact that our fighters must have been told something in order to let it land in the first place. The doors open and out comes Stormtrooper. You'd get blown away. Why have you decided to return to the fleet in full Stormtrooper armor? Why didn't you take the armor off? At least take the helmet off so people can see who you are. He's like, yeah, I'm just gonna get blown away by Hera. I mean, it's about time she did something in the series because you could have also removed her character and nothing would have changed. So far, all she's achieved in this series is perjury. And he's like, yeah, don't shoot me. I'm a stormtrooper. Somehow the droid knows who it is. I don't know how he tells who it is. Maybe from his walk. I mean, does he always walk like he's just crapped himself? I'm, I don't know. Then he takes his helmet off and somehow Ezra escaped the ship. We're never going to find out how. You don't need to know. You're just the audience. Why would you need an explanation on how something impossible could happen? Just accept it. Turn your brain off. It'll be fine. So she looks at him and the only thing I can think that's going through her head is, why did you wear full stormtrooper armor? I almost shot you in the face. Ezra? Why did you wear full stormtrooper armor? Hi, Hera. Spending all that time in another galaxy, coming back, and the first person you see is Hera. I'd go back again. Mm -hmm. Although now I've found out you're in it, I'd rather go somewhere else, thanks. So Ahsoka and Sabine now both live with crabs. And Ahsoka's looking off into the distance. You did well. Yeah, you did amazing. You betrayed an entire galaxy, then you betrayed your friend, and now you're trapped in another galaxy with me and crabs. You're one of the most evil people I know. You did amazing, thank you. I'm such a great master. Did I? Even she knows it's a load of cards wallop. 
Ezra got home. Or murdered by a legion of stormtroopers on the way there. Also, if Thrawn was actually the character that he built him up to be in this series. This incredible general who's a threat to the entire galaxy by some guy whose main claim to fame is how much milk replacement he can stuff down him in a day. Ezra's where he needs to be. Away from you, because you destroy everything that's around you. You taint it simply by proximity. It's time to move on. Strange you should say that, love. It's almost like we're holding on to the past. Because to me it's like, oh, I think I feel something. What is it? I felt like nothing. It's understandable it's nothing. You don't have any connection to the Force, love. Just shadows in the starlight. And then Ahsoka's like, oh, maybe I feel something as well. And as she stares off into the distance and turns around to go back to her crabs, the camera scrolls back. It was Darth Vader himself looking down upon the- Sorry, no, it turns out it's Odo from Deep Space Nine. This de-aging has always confused me. It's time to let go of the past. That's why we constantly keep hitting you in the face with it, because it's the only thing that anybody cares about. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. What a pile of trash. It was the worst ending ever. It wasn't satisfying. They got trapped in another galaxy just to conveniently hide them during the timeline. We find out if you removed Ahsoka and Sabine from Ahsoka, the event still would have happened. Happened. The witches would have gone to get Thrawn, brought Thrawn back, and Thrawn would have been in the galaxy. But now Sabine and Ahsoka would also be there to help fight them. Ezra wouldn't be there, but he's useless anyway. Sabine and Ezra would still be in different galaxies. Balin would have gone off to do nothing, so would have his apprentice. Your face is with the Empire! She's not with the Empire, she's with the Sand People. And this show had so few good characters. Anakin was decent, but he was basically a hallucination that Ahsoka felt when she could somehow learn to breathe underwater. Sabine had no access to the Force but now does, which means everyone in the entire universe is an idiot unless they can use the force. And Balin's motivations were absolutely entirely pointless. It's supposed to be deep and complicated and it turns out we just won't tell you. It's too stupid to understand. If only you watch Rebels, it'd be good. Uh, it explains everything, even the contradictions and the contradictions that contradict other things that we've already put in this series. No, welcome to Disney Star Wars, folks. That one that proves Dave Filoni has absolutely no idea what he's doing. Always remember, if your friend is clever enough, I'm not going in there, that's dangerous on my own. Don't worry, mate, we're with you. Just betray him, ditch him, and then go, I did well. If there's one thing I think we can all take from this show, it is never, ever trust Sabine and Ahsoka because they are both evil so foul. It really is beneficial to the entire galaxy that they're in a different one. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video, like the video, subscribe. More videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.